you know, mayhem, accidents, Got it. chaos. Another great idea back from Next Play. Up. Thanks for watching. Today, a gaming icon is back. We have got a huge two-part review of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Plus, a preview of Syndicate and Epic Games reveals the secrets behind the success of Gears of War 3. X-Play starts right now. Hello and welcome to X-Play, the show we make when we're not playing Skyrim. I'm Morgan Webb. And I'm Adam Sessler. I like to put baskets on the heads of townsfolk. Coming up, we've got a preview of Starbreeze's new take on Syndicate. This is not an old school isometric strategy game. Then we're gonna answer big important life questions in the X-Play inbox. Just kidding, they'll be trivial like usual. Plus, a brutally honest review of the Cursed Crusade. Did you know that people said ombre during the Crusades? Well, this game thinks so. And later, how a blockbuster franchise is made. Epic Games reveals the secrets behind the success of Gears of War 3. But first, a game to play on your Wii. No joke, right? No, no I'm Weird. joking at all. Nintendo came out of the gate strong with The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, and now we've got Skyward Sword as the console's about to sputter out its death rattle. Will this game make you dust off that white console with the blue light that really never stops flashing? I mean, what is it trying to tell you? Find out in our review. <laughs> The Wii's life ends as it began in Hyrule. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword may well be the last major release for the best-selling console of the generation. If so, at least you can't say it didn't go out with a flourish. <laughs> Skyward Sword takes place before all the other Zelda games, if that actually somehow matters. In this version of the legend, a goddess has split the world into the airborne land of Skyloft, where Link, Zelda, and their friends live, and the legendary surface, which nobody has seen for generations. As you might expect, Link is a bright-eyed youth with a crush on the girl with the old-fashioned name. Even if she can be a bit pushy sometimes. <laughs> Skyloft is an idyllic place that is unlike just about any other location in the Zelda series. The inhabitants get around using birds called Loftwings, and the best of the best get to be Knights of Skyloft. Being a knight mainly seems to consist of telling people they can't fly at night, but you gotta have goals in a small town. Naturally, right after Link passes the test to become a knight and starts making some headway with Zelda, she gets sucked into a windstorm of pure evil and vanishes. So Link suits up in the conveniently familiar knight outfit to track her down. And wouldn't you know it, he turns out to be some kind of chosen one. He picks up the goddess sword, which is imbued with an analytical artificial intelligence named Phi. She lacks the charm of Midna from Twilight Princess, but she'd clean up on skating with the stars. The world of Skyloft and the surface is pretty to look at and very cleverly crafted, but it is not without its flaws. The overworld of the sky is open and you can fly around in it as much as you like, but there's not really much to do up there besides enjoy the smooth flight controls using the Wiimote Plus. The surface is packed with puzzles and dungeons, but it's shockingly small. There are only three main areas and you'll retread old ground many times over the course of the game. It's still a long game, but some of that length is definitely padding and it feels smaller and linear as a result. Still, it's Zelda, and the story and setting are mostly there to serve the gameplay, which is fine, since the gameplay part is pretty great. We'll get to that in part two of our review. Stick around, because part two of our review is coming up later in the show. Syndicate was one of Peter Molyneux's early successes, and gamers have been begging for some kind of follow-up ever since. Well, it's finally happening, and the game is in the hands of Starbreeze, developers of Riddick and the Darkness. Now, if you're worried, let me put your mind at ease. You can make people shoot themselves. Here's a preview. In 1993, the original Syndicate was released, but that was a long time ago. In 2011, Syndicate is back, just when we needed it the most. Mission clock on. It's really an IP that, you know, hasn't been touched upon in a very long time. There's a lot of futuristic games. There's a lot of core shooters. But essentially, uh, this IP hasn't been touched upon. We wanted to bring it back. It was important to a lot of players. It was important to a lot of people. It was important to us. EA found a great partner in Starbreeze to kind of bring that in and bring this IP back. And essentially, the whole business is war tagline hasn't been used. And we love it. And uh, that's why this IP is back. The new syndicate will look quite different from the original. 
you know, obviously it's a first person shooter. But the thing is, first person shooter is the genre of today. We're able to tell that story in a first person perspective and still keep those core tenets of the original. Initializing surgical subroutines. The original was you're a CEO in an isometric view looking down at these agents controlling their brains and making them do all your evil biddings. Now you get to relive the story and understand things from a perspective of one of the top, you know, augmented agents for the largest syndicate. So you get to see it from a completely different perspective. Which brings us to the environment. The environments are going to be very different. Each syndicate has their own feel. They're out at sea. Some of them are on land. So the environments, the enemies are going to be different. The AI is brilliant. Very tough AI. You have to use all of your augmented powers along with that core shooter mentality of, you know, shooting people down to be able to pass through and, and get through your missions. So everything is going to be different. The enemies are going to be different. The way that they fight you is going to be different. And the way that you have to adapt to fight them is once again going to be different as well. The true mysteries of Syndicate will be revealed in February 2012 on all systems. Until then, trust no one, or everyone, either way. Coming up on X-Play Part 2 of our Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword review, plus Epic Games reveals the origins of Gears of War 3's Beast Mode, and we'll review the Cursed Crusade. Will this action RPG make you put down Skyrim? Hell no, cause it's garbage! Maybe the worst game ever. God, it's bad. But first, let's see who's dominating today's leaderboard for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, fueled by Mountain Dew's Rank Up experience. Just grab some specially marked Mountain Dew, log on to DewXP.com, enter your code to double your XP, and get to the top of the leaderboard so your gamer tag can be on X-Play. If you like video games, you need to be a member of Gamefly. Join Gamefly. Choose the games you want online, get them in the mail, and send them back when you're done. Due dates? None. Late fees? Non-existent. I have access to every single game I could possibly imagine. Go to Gamefly.com now. Click the joystick in the top right corner. Enter G4 in the box and get started with a free extended trial. And remember, you can cancel at any time. Product shown rated E through M. Gamefly also offers gift certificates for the gamer in your life. Save up to 20%. I love Gamefly. Wishing you had some extra cash for the holidays? Me too. So here's what I did. I went to usell.com and found out how much I could get from my old phone. All I did was go to usell.com, clicked on the model, then answered a few simple questions like, is the unit working? Which accessories do you have? And ho, ho, ho. I got tons of offers from tons of companies. The top offer was $59. $59 cash for this. And newer phones, you can get up to $200. Cha-ching! Who doesn't need cash? Usell.com gets you the best price with their max cash guarantee. If you find a better price elsewhere, they pay you the difference. The thing is, you want to do it now, because these things lose value every day. Usell.com will get you cash for a whole lot more, like tablets, cameras, gaming devices, MP3 players, and more. And have yourself an extra happy holiday this year from Usell.com. Quick search, more choice, more cash. Usell.com. If you want to hear what I really think about games while questioning the sanity of Justice Thomas, check out Sessler's Soapbox. New episodes every Tuesday at g4tv.com slash soapbox. It's been said, the more you know, the more you grow, the more you understand, inspire, volunteer, the more you realize, the more you laugh, <laughs> the more you love, improve yourself, improve others, go green, go healthy. That's why, for close to 25 years, we've been talking about the most important social issues. Motivating Americans to take action. And transform lives. And after all this time, there's one thing that continues to inspire us. The world can be a better place. The more you know. When you watch Campus PD, you'll build your communication skills. Why don't you shut your mouth? Have real life experiences. I'll take your hand, you out, have your strip search. Ah! And watch the doors open. Don't do it. Then close, but then open up again. Stop ah! shutting the door! And with these campus cops, you'll see more dudes chunk in the rug before 3 a.m. than most people see all day. Watch Campus PD and see the world of college mayhem starts january 3rd only on g4 it's not just a show it's an adventure i'll be coming for you enjoy this power while you have it hey welcome back to the show remember when i used to pretend to read emails off that old 
busted ass laptop. Those were the days. Now I got an iPad, which means it's time for the X-Play Inbox. Okay, our first question comes from Michael, and maybe because I'm a child, but I love this question. Michael writes, the holidays are near and Santa drank too many beers. Where are all the steals and deals for video games? <laughs> um, okay, so next week we actually have uh, X-Play's Holiday yeah. Buyer's Guide. Um, we're gonna have great games and we're also gonna talk about some great deals. Now, uh, one suggestion, uh, Mass Effect 3 comes out yes. uh, early next year. So it's a good time to pick up Mass Effect 2 because it's only 20 bucks. Exactly, that is a great gift, and that's a gift with a lot of gameplay for them. Exactly. That money. Uh, everybody's actually gonna sell Rage for 30 bucks on Black Friday, so that is another deal for yeah, you. Yeah, it's, it's a nice one to check out. Yeah, um, yeah it's a good deal. There are, actually, I would recommend, just try to get some of the classic games. They're still really good games, but yeah. maybe they're not like this year's Stuff newest Stuff from thing. early in the they're year, like, like L.A. Noire or something like that. They're all gonna drop in price. Another great idea. See, look yes. at me. We're so smart here. Next, Ascended Thor writes, uh, hey guys, between Modern Warfare 2 and Skyrim, which would you think has a better chance at Game of the Year? I'm gonna venture a guess on this Why one, and this go isn't prophetic. Go I'm ahead. gonna say Skyrim, because Skyrim came out this year, and Modern Warfare 2 came out in 2009. Right. <laughs> However, okay, but to the spirit of the question, uh, I assume that he is talking about Modern Warfare 3? I guess so, yes. Uh, and we're just gonna have to see. You're gonna have to watch But they're all winners. X plays won our best of 2011 special, December 14th, and that's where you're gonna find out uh, who wins game of Go the team! Year. And uh, finally, Josh has a, and actually a very important question. Uh, what is your favorite race to play as in the Elder Scrolls? I'm assuming he means Skyrim. Uh, I'll start off. Uh, I played as a Breton or a Brayton, and the only reason I did that is because I stalked the crap out of Todd Howard, and he told me if I was going to be a battle mage, I should probably choose that, and it's worked out quite well for me. This is an interesting question because I don't know many people that are not that are playing more than one character, so I can't right. say if it's my favorite. It's the one I have, and I'm going <laughs> to love him very much. <laughs> and, so I'm an orc. You're an orc, which I feel like is a, is a rarer choice. I feel like it not is. many people. And, and, and I, I chose an orc because when I was doing the, the review, I wanted to see if I took a battle melee character and I could make him really good at magic. And I did. So, ha. Huh. Nice work. Uh, I am a high elf because I wanted to do pure magic. However, you only get like a 50 point magicka bonus, which, you know, it, it feels like a lot at the beginning, but it really isn't that much. So, just um, go to the Mages College. You might get some apparel that'll just solve that problem immediately. I know. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sad I didn't pick Lizard. High elves imposing all of your belief system on everybody in Skyrim. Viewers, thank you for all the questions. Remember, you can have your hopes dashed by writing to xplay at g4tv.com. Wow, we are terrible people sometimes. Who knows? Maybe we'll give away some prizes, but we probably won't. All right, the whole reason xplay exists besides to line our pockets. We have pockets. Minor lined Mine are like sadness so and broken dreams. Is to stop people from buying bad video games. It's one of life's great disappointments. Yes. That in adulthood. So that is why we strongly urge you to pay attention to what we have to say about the Curse Crusade. The title is very apt. Nothing about this train wreck works, and you can see why in our review. <laughs> beginning of the 13th century, the Children's Crusade formed when a group of peasant teenagers decided to take back Jerusalem from the heretics occupying the area. Those who survived the trip across the Alps and subsequent shipwreck were captured and sold into slavery. The only good news about the whole trip would be that they wouldn't be forced to endure the Cursed Crusade. It is a nightmare. No, forgetting the third federal department that you want to shut down is a nightmare. The Cursed Crusade is a tragedy that you experience one ghastly level at a time. You take the role of a would-be crusader looking for his lost father in Jerusalem and his bumbling Spaniard companion. And oh yeah, you just happen to be cursed. This is getting more and more ridiculous! The game smacks you across the face with cutscenes every five minutes. Some action sequences don't even last as long as the cutscenes surrounding it. They're not even done well. Uh, aren't you going to need a squire? Here's an example of a level. You start off in a cutscene explaining why you're in a boat. You hit land. Cutscene. Fight a couple of guys. Cutscene. Do we get to fight again? No. Cutscene. Then fight. Cutscene. Fight. Cutscene. And that's it. Are you done? When you do get a chance to fight, you find out that's not fun either. 
Each weapon and weapon combination has their own combo that you have to unlock. The finishers are bloody, but they mainly get you through the awful enemy AI just a little faster. And with backgrounds and environments this bland, you'd think that Paul W.S. Anderson directed it. You think this is over? And when you get tired of all the glitches, you start to look forward to the cutscenes, which only remind you why you hated them in the first place. Ah, not this again! It's digital Stockholm Syndrome. The only nice thing I have to say about the Curse Crusade is that you can skip the cutscenes. Now, if you could only do that with the rest of the game. That's why the Curse Crusade gets a one. Why am I here? Out of five. Somebody got up in the morning, went to work, and their job was to make that game. Wow. I'm sure that game will definitely make an appearance on the Golden Mullets this January. After the break, two games that don't suck. We've got part two of our Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword review and the secrets behind the success of Gears of War 3. We'll be right back. This portion of X-Play is fueled by Mountain Dew. Life is better with Mountain Dew double XP, so rank up for Modern Warfare 3. Just get your hands on some Mountain Dew, find the code, and go to dewxp.com. Enter the code and watch that sweet, sweet XP come rolling in. It's Mountain Dew's Rank Up Experience. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 double XP and other prizes available at dewxp.com. Now there's a safe, natural way to dramatically improve your sexual performance with PostiVac, the medically approved vacuum therapy system that's 95% effective guaranteed. Simply apply the gentle suction of the PostiVac system and within four minutes, you'll experience complete sexual performance. I was kind of amazed how well PostiVac works. It worked the first time around. I'm going, wow, it really works. Now you and the one you love can enjoy complete sexual pleasure and satisfaction anytime with no pills, no doctor visits. PostiVac is a clinically proven vacuum therapy system, not a pill. You'll experience results in less than four minutes, not hours, and there are no harmful side effects. Vacuum therapy is so safe and effective that it is now the only erectile treatment covered by Medicare Part B. And now PostiVac is approved by almost every major insurance company in the country. You pay nothing up front, so there's no waiting for reimbursement. We even take care of the paperwork for you. PostiVac's the only way to go. I'm telling you, I've tried everything, and uh, I know uh, if you don't give it a try, you're crazy. You're going to be uh, all you can be, or you're not going to be all you can be. And this helps you be all you can be. If you have a brain in your head, Dial this 1-800 number after this commercial. Why take the best part of life out of your life when you can have life with PostiVac? Call now to have PostiVac delivered discreetly to your home. It's 100% guaranteed to work for you or your money back. And remember, PostiVac is covered by Medicare and most insurance companies, so your PostiVac may be yours at little or no cost to you. PostiVac works in minutes, but the results can last a lifetime. Experience the confidence. Experience complete sexual performance. Experience PostiVac. On the next bomb patrol, Afghanistan, tension continues to mount. You're way too far! Now their challenge is to clear a Taliban compound and to keep the team from falling apart. Someone's going to get hurt. Bomb Patrol Afghanistan, all new tomorrow at 10, only on G4. This holiday, Paddock Chevrolet gives you more. Like a $109 a month lease on a 2012 Cruise or a $139 a month lease on a 2012 Malibu. Both are sign and drive, no money down leases. That means no first payment, no taxes, no fees. You don't even need a trade-in. And Paddock will give you more. A minimum full blue book value for your trade. Visit our newly remodeled state-of-the-art showroom. This holiday, get more at Paddock Chevrolet. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. It's the Jets on SNY. Get post-game reactions, locker room coverage, and exclusive player interviews after every game on Jets Post Game Live. The latest Game Green news direct from Rex Ryan on Jets Open Mic. An in-depth recap of the last game on Jets Extra Point. And a preview of the game ahead with one-on-one -on -one player and coach interviews on Jets Game Plan. All on SNY, the TV home of the Jets. 
Welcome back. Gears of War 3 is one of the year's best-selling games, and it isn't just because people like roided out soldiers and chainsawing. Okay, that's part of it. The success of the series is due to the consistently solid work of Epic Games and a couple of happy accidents along the way. It's been over a month since we got our grubby little hands on Gears of War 3, and time has flown by. That's because we've been having so much fun playing through the game's campaign in multiplayer mode. That's what I like to see out there in the field. To discover their secrets of success, we talked with the game's creators. I'd say the biggest lesson we learned in creating Gears of War 3 is to make a game that is polished, that works day one. From the very start on Gears 3, we knew that we wanted to be the four-player game, the co-op game that you played with your buddies online. And so that really shaped everything. Miracle we didn't get killed. In Gears 3, because we'd already done the, here's all the stuff we wanted to put into Gears, now it's a lot more about nuance and subtlety. It's interesting to hear developers use words like subtlety and nuance when describing a macho action-packed game. But that shows how differently the people at Epic think. I'd say the biggest leap from Gears of War 2 to Gears of War 3 is the online working and not only working, but being a very deep multiplayer suite. Gamers will buy a game initially for the campaign, they'll burn through it in two, three, four days, and then often they'll return it or they'll trade it in. We don't want that to happen anymore. You count on that! Beyond a deep multiplayer experience, the game makers worked hard to create the most beautiful world they could. For Gears 3, what we wanted to do was take the technology and, and advance that. You'll want to see this. And from an artistic standpoint, the underlying philosophy was let's pump more color in there. Yeah, he's got the fork fitted out real nice. Their willingness to try new things led the team to create a brand new experience, Beast Mode, where you control waves of monsters attacking human heroes. So whenever you're making a game, there are these kind of aha or eureka moments that wind up happening. Lee Perry had actually done the Possess command, which is an Unreal Engine ability to take over creatures and things like that. And he saw that when he possessed all these locust creatures, they largely just worked. And I realized that I can say, hey, let me control this wretch. And suddenly I was running around as a wretch and the camera worked and the dude worked and his attacks worked. And then I made this video of me running around as all these creatures and so much of it just worked. And everybody I showed that video to was just like, dude, this this is like 90% there. It's those kind of innovations that push Epic forward. And for an extra dose of heartwarming triumph, the developers play Gears of War 3 together with their sons. I just sit there and, and watch him play, and he, he loves it. He loves having me there. He's 11 years old now, and he has a great time with it. He thinks it's fantastic. He finished the campaign. He gave me a hug. He said, Dad, because Gears of War is the best game I've ever played. And that, that like melted my heart. It was amazing. Stick around, there is more X-Play on the way, including part two of our Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword review. That's the part where we give the game a score and you guys fight about it. We'll be right back. Next on Attack of the Show. Pull out your magnifying glass. CSI's Elizabeth Harnois drops by the studio to inspect it for questionable fluids. And I learn the art of trapeze and come uncomfortably close to ping my pants. It's Attack of the Show, next. Sweat. It raised monuments. Discovered new worlds. And redefined music. It gave man wings. And took us all to the moon. Great things can come out of sweat. So don't let odor stop you. Gillette Odor Shield turns odor into freshness. Is the best in life passing you by because you still don't have a big screen high definition TV? How would you like a brand new extra large state of the art 50 inch plasma TV? Imagine watching your favorite shows and movies with spectacular high definition quality picture and sound right in your own home. Tronics Country will make it happen for you. No matter what your credit history, with Tronics Country, you are approved. If you have an active checking account and can afford flexible low payments, we'll send you a brand new 50 inch high definition TV. Guaranteed. I never realized how much I was missing out by not having a high-definition TV. The quality of the picture is amazing. It gets even better. With your paid order, Tronics Country will send you a free wireless laptop computer with software upgrade featuring 26 programs. Call now and receive your 50-inch plasma TV and laptop computer with software upgrade. No matter what your credit history, you are approved. Get the electronics you deserve. 
Call Tronics Country today at 800-969-1611. That's 800-969-1611. In this crazy high-tech world of fax machines and car phones, it's hard to stay on top of all of the latest gaming news. Good thing the X-Play newsletter is a thing that still exists. Get all the latest headlines, exclusive demos, interviews, and more delivered straight to your inbox. Just go to g4tv.com slash newsletter to sign up. Thanks to your generosity, Marines have delivered Christmas to children in need since 1947. You know who it is without a doubt and hesitation. If money talks, I got my masters in communications. <laughs> East side on my arm, three stripes on my sneakers. And even if they slip us, they better be Adidas. Welcome back. Earlier in the show, you saw part one of our Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword review, and now it's time for part two. That means we'll cover all of the multiplayer features, like team deathmatch and teabagging. Of course, I'm being facetious. This is Zelda, which means this is one long epic adventure, and a good one. Here's part two of our review. We'll admit it, we were a little skeptical of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword's heavy reliance on motion controls. Would they enhance the game or knock it flat on its back? I'm happy to report that the controls are so good, it actually came as a bit of a shock, like a surprise bird in your window. Skyward Sword significantly changes up how you interact with Link. Most prominently, his sword is controlled by the Wiimote, and in fact, you can move it around one-to-one, -one, which is surprisingly satisfying. Actual swings lock the sword into one of eight preset attack animations, but this is used to the game's advantage. Many enemies demand precise use of the sword's angles. In fact, the first boss will actually take your sword away if you're too sloppy about it. He also does this really creepy tongue thing. <laughs> You will have to become skilled at using the Wii Motion Plus with precision to succeed, and this is a very welcome level of challenge. Link also picks up a large arsenal of gadgets and tools, many of which are not new to the series, but you've never controlled them like this before. Each has a distinct and solid feel, and using them is never frustrating. Dungeon design is top quality, and many of the puzzles you encounter make direct use of the motion controls, like these eyes you have to make dizzy by swinging your sword in a circle. Some elements are bogged down by that padding problem, though. Link's shield can now break if it's overused, forcing you to run back to the Skyloft store to buy another one. You'll also collect a bunch of crafting items, which are used to upgrade items in a grindy and not fun crafting system that doesn't really seem to fit in a Zelda game. If all three titles had motion control integration this seamless and smooth, a lot of the complaints about the system would have never come up. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword gets a four out of five. Well, there you have it. As expected, another solid mm -hmm. Legend of Zelda game, but it's really not a huge evolutionary step forward for the series. No, and it's important to note, this is a good Zelda game. Mm -hmm. It's just not the best. I think the best way to look at it is it's kind of a step backwards for a franchise that really helped create the open world game. Right, but a, a step forward, though, as far as motion control is concerned. Oh, yes. Miyamoto, when they announced the game at E3, he said, hey, we built this surrounding Wii Motion Plus. It plays fantastically yeah. in this game, and it's very important because how you hold the sword does make a difference because every boss battle, or every battle in general, yeah. is really its own puzzle. And I think it's important. You need Motion Plus to play this game. Absolutely. Um, I guess the one other thing is there are these light RPG mechanics, so you can kind of upgrade stuff and your shield can break. What this unfortunately does is it leads to deaths and a lot of backtracking. That's one of the downsides of the game is you're revisiting a lot of locales a lot, like in the DS games. Right, right. But again, a solid entry yes, into the is. series. Definitely play it. Uh, and here's a look at what's coming up on X-Play. 
tomorrow. We've got even more reviews of the fall's biggest games, including the cross-country racer Need for Speed The Run and the co-op platformer Rayman Origins. Plus, we'll preview the downloadable Shank 2 and visit Infamous 2's Festival of Blood. Plus, Kristen Adams has a cheap for Warhammer 40K Space Marine. You're excited for Rayman. Yes, yes. I mean, I think also, I mean, there's so many good, vast games. Yes. Having something linear and directed and visceral. And adorable. Mm. Thanks for watching X-Play.